All right. So um, thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, kind of a, a crew of the, the craziest people in this open science um, environment. And I'm really glad that we found some time to, to synchronize. So I think the, the purpose of this meeting is really to, to understand how, how do we transform the current landscape of all of these, uh, let's say, decentralized initiatives to try and work together on, on the common goal of, of whatever we envision as, as one common goal. And obviously, as you know, our experience in Corona Y um, goes on, we, we realize and we learn which things work, which things don't. And honestly, the biggest struggle for, for us right now is aligning interests of individuals and organizations and other communities and everyone kind of working in the same pace because sometimes it feels like everyone is like on a, on a separate, um, you know, tracks or, or something. And everyone, even though overall we feel that we share the common goal, there is a lack of environment that unites us. And that's basically my, my kickoff um, intro. Sounds great. Very like cool. <laughs> yeah. How do you, um, I think, I think that's a, a great intro and I love that, like you said, that we all managed to find time to connect. How, is there a way that you want to structure this discussion in particular, or should we kind of just spitball with our current just feelings? Go ahead. I would love to hear your experience because obviously you as Jago, you interact with many more Corona Ys than we as Corona Y interact with Joggles, right? So I would love to, to hear your experience because obviously you probably collaborate with other groups like helpful engineering and others and try to figure out how to bridge all of these things together. Um, I, I read, first time I read your white paper, I was like, oh wow, that, that's exactly what, uh, you know, I wanted to, to make happen in, in this world, kind of the, this giant uh, collaborative environment, this uh, place where uh, things that challenge status quo uh, start and actually give uh, get some uh, some life you know beyond the ideation and yeah I would love to hear your experience in this challenge of bridging different communities and how you see it working from your side. Mm. Well, um, the experience has been clearly challenging um, in the sense that there one one on one side on one hand you have the vision. Uh, and then you have, on the other hand, the what we experienced during COVID uh, is an extreme version of, of an implementation uh, where you have to, to build everything uh, as fast as possible. Uh, obviously, we learn a lot, but we, we break a lot of things also on the way and, uh, and, and we make a lot of mistakes. Um, but what I've seen is uh, that we you know, that, that vision is actually doable. Um, that um, the way people now actually see science being made um, is not the usual, um, you know, closed door uh, institutional version of it. Uh, they see other versions. Um, they experience other versions. And so um, I see a real future for uh, an alternative to, uh, to, uh, to the purely inst institutional way and, and purely corporate way. Uh, and I think that you and, and, and other groups and ourselves have been proving that. And so um, at the end, uh, I think you've said it very well, uh, and we all agree on that, that we we need to, um, to, at the end, what matters is the creation of, of commons, you know, of scientific and technological commons that make sense for the world uh, and to, to be used. Uh, it's not about ourselves. It's not about who's going to come first. Uh, it's really about how do we make, you know, the best science? Uh, how do we create the best experiments, the best projects that make sense at the end, have a true impact? Um, and so, uh, in, in that way, uh, I think your community, uh, other communities, all community, at the end, they're like snapshots 
you know, of people coming together for specific reasons, but it's very dynamic. And so, new ways uh, those snapshots together so that you can free define in, op in open basically as many opportunities as possible to those uh, to the participants so that they can jump from you know uh, opportunities to opportunities because you know the the, the participants that are that have joined our communities for COVID um, they won't stay forever uh, they have other things to do uh, they will get actually other stuff in their, in their mind and they will be they will have other kind of interest and so the idea is that how do we you know uh, create um, a space where you can um, always find uh, a way you know to answer that need your, that personal need or interest but using an open pass like a collaborative pass uh, and so you need a lot of opportunities but a lot of way to connect and so by bringing communities together we can do that because uh, we create a high so um, that's that's think that that's, I think that would be like one of the most beautiful goals we could achieve together is by 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 making bridges you know uh, and and what I see is um, at the end what what matters and Alex will be able to test testimony on this is is how how important um, like direct animation, direct contact with the community is, uh, you know, like the coordination, the animation, the engagement. And so um, at the end, uh, it's, it's how much you want actually to put, uh, how much energy you want to put within a group of people to make it achieve something. Uh, and so, so um, that will be like, that's, that's the reason why we need as many communities as possible. There will never be like one giant community. It's stupid. It's just a, a play on word for, for us. There will be like, uh, like thousands, you know, millions, if not more actually communities, because you need actually also humans to take care actually of those groups. Um, yeah. And so the question here is how to bring sustainability to, let's assume that there are thousands of groups like Cornelai obviously they have to uh, integrate into real world, right? And they have to have operations teams, like the, the ones that are actually paid for their work or like compensated for the work uh, to, to focus on this as the, you know, their, their main initiative. And the thing is, if you imagine thousand communities like that, there's only that many grants that can be funneled into, into this playground. So how do we create an environment that is not competing yeah. by, by design? You know what I'm saying? So it's, I would say like it's a different question. I think that we can do already a lot without grants, um, but I, you, you won't get as far as having grants. But uh, um, the, the point, when we started Jogo, the point was um, not to introduce any money exchanges on the platform at all. Uh, and to re-explore other sources of motivations uh, and uh, and ways to engage people, um, coronavirus just you know crushed that that idea because we needed to act very fast and we had to propose micro grants to uh, to the project so they could move forward. Um, now we see that uh, you know once you've given the taste of money to a, to a group of people, they just you know it's like a drug. They just look at this. They forget about the other ways you know of getting together sometimes and moving forward. So. So, <laughs> but I mean, no, like... <laughs> the challenge here is not that the people are kind of greedy and, and want money, but no, no, it's, it's, not the it's, point. it's yeah, actually it's the objection that they have. So, for example, if someone joins Kernel Y and really wants to contribute, but hey, they just lost their job, they will go ahead and start looking for a new job versus contributing and solving the thing that actually caused them to lose a job, right? It's a short term optimization right here. Yeah. And um, obviously, you know, there is a lot of stuff that can be done using uh, voluntary contributions, but the system, the, the, the actual environment and infrastructure has to be uh, viable. And I mean, mm -hmm. obviously you guys definitely have uh, people um, on board that are like full-time employees, right? They have to, to pay their rent. They have to uh, basically have their basic needs uh, covered. And um, I mean, those people have to have some operational 
um, sustainability in terms of finances. So it's less about just uh, giving money to people to build like machine learning models and more to give money to people to do mundane tasks like onboarding people, uh, documenting things, like structuring everything, routing people to the right uh, things. And that's, you know, I don't think that's even possible without some operational uh, sustainability. Uh, you're right. Um, and, uh, and we couldn't have done everything we've done if we didn't have a full-time team. Um, that's for sure. Um, and, the, and the other question that comes to mind is um, beyond, beyond grants, what other sources of funding could be available? And what I'm wondering about is Jogal, for example, or, or Open COVID-19 rather, is its own community, but it's also part of Jogal, which has its, you know, other revenue streams or, or that are beyond open COVID-19. And so I'm wondering, and I don't know the answer to this, but out of all of these other open communities that do similar work to open COVID-19 and Corona Y, how many are also linked to organizations or, or companies or um, nonprofits that have other sources of revenue, whether it's a product that they, that they sell or a service that they provide or you know, more unrestricted funding that um, goes to, to things other than uh, COVID um, support. Just a thought. It's, it's true. Um, what I see is um, there are different approaches for this question. Um, one is, um, is do you, like to, to get to a point where we have kind of like a, fr a freelance market, you know, for, for science. Um, I don't, I don't think it's that it's like the, the end goal. Um, um, I think the point is that how do we, how do, how do we enable, you know, uh, individuals to be able to provide a push, you know, for, to a project um, on a, sh in a short time, you know, like if can, can the, provide like a week where they can refocus on something or like a month or even like three months because they want to provide it. Uh, if they want to um, go further, um, then we can imagine to install maybe you need kind of fellowship. Um, but then you enter the field of uh, traditional institutions and their business model where um, you have to raise a lot of money um, and, 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 and you have to get this framework that is extremely well structured and, 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 and secure to, uh, to, to support those individuals, uh, on the long term. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying that, um, this is not a goal. And, and that's for me, it's a personal goal too, for Drogo at some point to be able to provide such fellowships, you know, for, individuals that would like to, uh, to contribute to an uh, open project, open science, open innovation project like for a year and, and to be able to, to, to pay them and have, for them to have an impact. But um, um, I don't think that um, what we're doing is going to replace uh, like full-time jobs. Um, I think, I think uh, the point is as we are living in a society that is uh, where the mobility between jobs is, high, is higher and higher and more dynamic and more dynamic that um, we, one person will get more and more opportunities to, to transition and, and then also provide, uh, to have like intermediary spaces in his or her life to provide also energy and in, in attention to, an, to a project, to a common project. But, um, you know, I, I actually think about that a lot, about that point. Like, it doesn't have to be full-time. It can be part-time. But then mm -hmm. when you think about it, the, the level and the scope of problems that we as humanity are facing, it requires, like, hundreds of full-time people. There is, there is no way that we can just rely I mean, on 10-minute on contribution. Million, yeah. We could talk about millions of full-time people, at least, yeah. Yeah. And this is obviously, and we have intent for those millions of people to contribute. If you think about projects, and I always think uh, about it in terms of there is some visionary, right? The, the founder of the initiative. And then there are executors, like the actual makers, the crafters, people that will follow that, 
a visionary entrepreneur or just a person that really wants to change the status quo. And the reality is that even for that visionary to be able to focus his mental energy and everything solely on, on the initiative, he has to be full time. And, uh, you know, the only way to to kind of bring down the objections that these people have, because I, I think of it as myself five years ago, right? I, I literally was questioning myself, should I keep building like the Snapchats of the world or should I do something meaningful? And I had the list of objections. Well, I, I have, you know, a girlfriend, now wife, you know, I have to uh, kind of make sure that my life is stable enough for us to have a good relationship, to, to, you know, do things that we want. And all of these things stack up as objections why I'm not, I wasn't proceeding to do all of the things that I really wanted to do. And it was just the environment that was preventing me from focusing on that full time. So I think because I see more and more people join Corona Y and they have desire to focus on these things. They just have no ability because of these objections that sometimes are really, you know, meaningful objections because, you know, someone doesn't have a job or someone doesn't uh, have time because he has a list of things in, in their life. And uh, I think, and obviously we don't have a solution for that, but if we would imagine, a, you know, building bridges that not only solve kind of the, the routing people into the projects, but also fighting these objections that, that people have through a combination of funding, combination of, um, you know, workplace mechanics that are more, uh, you know, more similar to what people are expecting from something that they would be dedicating, uh, I don't know, 30 hours per week. I think you're touching the point of entrepreneurship in general, uh, that at the end, it's what matters is your personal business model. That if you want to create something new, um, there are not many paths you know, in front of you that you make it happen. You know, you know, either you have a, a lot of money that you can use yourself and you can sustain yourself for two years, and, and build something that won't pay you for, for, for those two years um, until that, you know, you reach a critical point where you've raised money or you have an income you know, that is high enough for you to pay yourself or maybe a team. Um, and, and it's the same, you know, in, in startups, it's the same also in, in academic laboratories. It's the same pretty much everywhere, I would say. Uh, and, um, and so at the end, it's, 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 um, it's really up to, to you is that, is that something you want to do like full time um, that's going to define your life in the next few years at least. Uh, and that everything about you is going to probably resolve around this idea and this vision and this envy you have. Um, and, um, and so, but, but the, the point is that there, I don't want to um, force people to make that that decision because it's a very harsh one and you probably experienced that yourself. Um, and so, so the point is um, there are many people out there that we don't need necessarily this kind of individuals only, you know, to make projects uh, happen. Uh, and uh, even though they're important, uh, they're, they're not absolutely necessary for everything. Um, and so, so I think, I think it would be, too harsh of a step or probably like, like kind of an impossible goal to imagine that you know we'll be able to provide like full-time salary or even like part-time salary but it's something to sustain someone you know uh for for that person to, to focus on, on on their project you know for like two years let's say uh, but at the end it means that you have to sustain yourself even after that so you have to, to figure out the business model of your project and a business model nowadays cannot be only um you know um, only rely, relying on, on subven like on grants typically um, because it's 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 really harsh yeah. uh, but the the reality is if you're not relying on grants and and public uh, support you're most probably relying on the uh, like commercial infrastructure right which is most certainly not aligned with uh, the the impact side of it and well, I'm not thinking. Not, I was not thinking that you have the commercial aspect of it, 
but um, I wouldn't say that the public support is um, is a grant. I think it's um, it's something that's quite different, and uh, and and we've seen actually business models that are uh, very interesting uh, to me, like on YouTube with YouTuber and, and you know, like creators or, and Patreons and exactly. I don't see why um, we you know creators could actually succeed at some such a certain thing and why not scientists or innovators you see mm -hmm. um so well because so everyone I, wants, I, uh, you know likes funny jokes but not everyone right 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 uh, but um uh, i think it's, it's just that we're not ready for that but we'll come to this um uh, you know there are already like in france the system is a bit different than in the u.s where you know in the u.s you have a lot of big foundations funded by billionaires and they fund the research system in the innovation system. We don't have actually that in France because the, the public system is pretty strong. And, and, uh, and billionaires actually prefer actually funding the culture than the science. Uh, and, and the thing is, however, we have uh, a few big institutes that are independent that are private, like the Pasteur Institute uh, or the Curie Institute. That are really is full, really, that you know, bringing milestones uh, regularly, and and but they're mostly actually funded through private uh, through donations, um, and and they uh, to the use campaigns to raise uh, it's and and they try actually to create a link you know with 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 the public. I say okay, um, we explain you what we're doing. You know, you become part of the community. I, I think somehow what they're doing is like what we could do at some point, but different, differently, obviously, uh, and, and in probably in a more massive way, in a more distributed way. Um, just have to imagine, uh, you know, a way to implement this. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, it's a difficult question, but um, at the end is how do you, you know, I, 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 the way I foresee Drogo, uh, a part of Drogo is, uh, where you know independent scientists and innovators, grassroots also, uh, to, to to be like the creators on YouTube, to find a public, you know, to find uh, uh, a community of support, not only for the project where they can get involved, but also a way to, for them to, to support even financially. Uh, and so you create this market basically, where if you really, you know, if you're really into what you're doing and you're proving that uh, it, what you're doing is, is you know, interesting, is moving forward, um, then yes, yeah, sure, um, your behavior is not going to be the same one as if you were in a chemical laboratory in your bubble, you will have to interact with your public. So you probably have to, to crack a joke, you know, once or twice. Yeah. And, but, and here's uh, where the separation between kind of like these radical visionaries uh, comes and the, the actual makers, because I, I don't think it's a pos I think it's impossible to have scientists and like data scientists or like HIV researchers, um, you know, create content and create like customer facing or like consumer facing uh, content. It, it's just impossible goal. It, they, they will I never. Think, I think it's a new generation of scientists that we are going to see. Yeah. I just have hard time have, being an introvert myself, right? Being an engineer myself, I just I understand how hard of a task it is to um, actually think about all of this content creation. It, it's not it's not for everyone. You said it yourself. It's a new it's a new niche, um, and so like YouTube is not for everyone. Not every creators are on YouTube, um, so it's it's going to be a specific niche. It's not going to be universal. I'm not saying that it should be the only way to fund also a uh, project in innovators, but at least it should exist. Yeah. Um, and there will be other ways that we always see big grants. Uh, it's like basically we need to imagine like as many ways as possible, uh, and um, and you know to to support independent um, research and innovation, and it's um, especially coming from individuals that are. Um, not part of the institutions that they, they cannot access the usual ladders like levers to, uh, to, to fund their, their project. But what we're talking about is, um, you know, 
if, if you have an ID nowadays and you think that this is going to work, either you are already a scientist, an academic scientist, and you're going to follow the way that the, like the different paths that you have in front of you as an academic scientist. Uh, if you think that this, this is a fundable idea because it's, you know, it could become, uh, um, it could be transformed into a business model, you create a startup uh, and you raise capital. Um, and so those are already like, re startups are kind of like a new thing when you think about it. So it's, it's a new niche that expanded quite a, quite recently um, because a uh, whole ecosystem organized around it, around this ID. Um, and, um, and, and it's great, it's serving a lot of purpose. Uh, there is a lot of bullshit, but there is a lot of great projects too. And, um, and, and, and that are using this money that probably would have never been funded otherwise because the monthly was not there. Um, and we just, I think we just think that we need to create an, yet another niche, you know, like a way to organize a whole ecosystem of people interested in these kind of approaches. Uh, it's going to take some time, but um, we need to send strong signals that this is needed and, and this is going to be useful. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, as you said, Thomas, I think figuring out the, um, what's the word? The official structure of the organization or the company, whether it's a, a social enterprise or a nonprofit organization or, you know, some sort of hybrid or, I mean, I've seen, I've seen startups that have, are just 10, 20 people and they have a foundation that helps get them get grants, but then they're also a startup so they can get VC funding. There's so many different hybrid models of, um, yeah. of financing that exactly uh, to explore but i'm no expert in that <laughs> <laughs> but it would be interesting to look at you know the other types of open communities the the types of communities that we're inviting to collaborate on the playbook for example um you know to what extent does the the legal structure of an organization or of a company to what extent does that um impede or contribute to the success of the community Mm -hmm. Also, in terms of the reputation of the organization that's hosting the community um, and the mentality, the values that drive the community, all yeah. of those things are also play a role. Totally, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're out of time, but this has been very interesting in terms of discussion. It uh, seems like me and, and, and Thomas were, were mostly <laughs> talking, but um, obviously... Maybe can, can we spend like maybe five minutes on the playbook? I think that was the original goal of the call. <laughs> sure. sure. Um, I, I can give a, a quick update. So I've looked through the list um, of communities that Anton had shared from the, the, the public air table. Um, and I noticed open COVID-19 was actually not on there. So I submitted a request to, or I filled out a form to have open COVID-19 listed on that, um, on that massive list of, COVID-19 related initiatives. And I'm in touch with, uh, or I've reached out to the Open Humans community um, to have them join the, the chair channel. And so I think they're, they're in it now. Um, so yeah, I guess we should just start talking about how to structure some of the discussions on that chair channel and how to um, yeah, how to how to ask questions and how to generate discussion, but I'm. Do we want to, know, to, to more chat about that strategy? That on open channel? Channel? Sorry. Do we want to invite more people and communities into that open channel? Yeah, I thought what we had talked about was let's see who else is on there. Right now we have open humans, but their invitation is pending. Uh, Corona Y and Jogo, um, but I do think there's value. In, in having a few more that are maybe not necessarily COVID related. Um, that's why I like the idea of open humans being on there because of the questions that we're asking are more generally what leads to the success of a volunteer powered initiative as a whole for um, addressing crises, whether we're talking about pandemics or wildfires or you know climate change or whatnot. Information, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the questions that we're asking in the playbook are relevant to 
are not are not COVID specific, or at least we've tried to word them that way, um, so that we can generate more thought leadership globally. Um, but that's also the the intention of Jogal specifically, because Jogal as an organization is not COVID nineteen specific. So um, something to think about from the Corona Y standpoint. Yeah, uh, let's try to invite those communities that uh, you mentioned from the list and see Sorry? if we can get open humans to accept, invite, and others. Um, happy yeah. to, to have another, you know, quick call just between those, um, I don't know, like leaders of, of these communities. I think we can also bring in the helpful engineering uh, guys. Yeah, shout out to our... Um, Someone, a, a volunteer on Open COVID nineteen and Jogol, who is a an active member in Helpful Engineering, he's let he's shared the playbook and the channel um, within their Slack. Um, but it sounds like that community is dwindling quite rapidly over the last couple of months from how things have been <laughs> changing. I think it's something that we've experienced at Open COVID nineteen and perhaps at Corona Y, you guys have also experienced some extent of, of a natural dwindling progression of the engagement on the community. Yeah, so all thanks to, to all of these things that happen in our lives. So right. definitely expected and understood. Um, all right, so maybe in terms of the open playbook, um, let's get the open humans to accept the invite. Let's maybe prompt a call with them um to have some discussion um not sure what what's the next step yeah i think we can start um asking a couple of questions on the channel there's about 20 people that are on it already yeah. so if we can get those people to um give us some of their insights on some of the questions from the playbook then we can add them mm -hmm. to the playbook if we're if we're looking to publish or to, to share the playbook out with our networks sometime in October. Um, I think that gives us a couple of weeks to continue getting some insights on there. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm still really excited about this project from a thought leadership standpoint. I think, uh, I think Jogol, Corona Y, any other open community who partners with us and, and contributes content uh, has a lot to gain from, from working on this project and so. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys, uh, me and Anton have to jump off to another call, but yeah. it was a pleasure. Uh, definitely looking forward to yeah. more of, of these conversations because they're definitely, definitely needed. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, let's Bye -bye. keep chatting on Slack about, about the shared channel and all that. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have a great Bye. rest of your day, guys. Okay.